All right, so here I am carrying on with the uh, armchair typing of um, the performer musician uh, Aurora, and with reference to um, a The Verge magazine article that had a lot of direct quotes from her included in it, as well as some descriptive bits about uh, the writer's observation, the journalist's observation about what she was like. Uh, so I'm just going to go through that bit by bit, and I'm also quoting from what I've already written in correspondence to someone um, to who, who had put to me the question, um, what is your opinion on this person you've never, who I'd never heard of before, I'd never seen anything about her until uh, this person asked me, uh, what would be your opinion um, as to whether she is an ISFP or an INFP? Uh, so in part one I was talking about, uh, I'd already begun the process and I also had a lot of general comments about um, what INFPs, you know, signs that someone might be a, an introverted feeling a dominant person or type, or, sorry, person who identifies with such a type, ISFP or INFP, um, and uh, blah, 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 blah. So I'm going to continue with that. This is the, I'm going back to quote the letter that I wrote about my opinion. Um, and what I was using to inform, what was informing my opinion. Uh, I made the general comment, the speech of NFs is usually peppered with analogies, metaphors, similes, as above. Um, now this is true of Ns as well, uh, sorry, NTs as well. It's true of, of people who have the uh, so-called intuitive um, information gathering preference. Uh, it's just that, what I, in my experience anyway, what I notice is that um, NFs are even more likely, they, they'll use it even more often, although NTs could use it quite often too. A NTs will um, be very good typically with making analogies too. And, and certainly, and, and you know, with doing all those things, it's just that they might do a little less wordplay. Ah, whatever, there's nothing ironclad about that. All right, so, but I would say that what I've observed in real life, uh, interacting with so many ends, is that the greater the amount of wordplay in how some, in what somebody says, um, in a casual setting, you know, when they're playing around and they're just having fun and everybody's accepting everybody and feels relaxed and it's okay to be irreverent and so on. The greater the amount of wordplay, the more likely it is that you're dealing with um, someone of the in, intuitive, um, information gathering preference within the Myers-Briggs temperament indicator system. And if it's, I found that if it's punny, um, suspect, especially in INTP, <laughs> although I've also seen an ENFJ uh, do the most, um, a triple sal cow of uh, punning in a row. I mean, it was breathtaking. She came up with, <laughs> she joked, she kept a joke where she had about 13 puns um, in a row, and it was pretty cool. So it's it's not just the INTPs, but I have noticed that for some strange reason, the INTPs seem to, a lot of the INTPs seem particularly fond of this uh, form. And then another like you know kind of ah, something I've noticed I don't know is that if uh, the wordplay is is particularly whimsical, um, that you know if there's much more pertinent evidence uh, there supporting it. Um, you know, I, I found that it, that is incident quite often with NFPs, but particularly ENFPs. We just talk so much, right? We just <laughs> INFPs will enjoy it, and they'll do some of it too, but they're just, they don't try your nerves the same way at all. So <laughs> as my INFP friends could attest. Uh, all right, anyway, moving back to, coming back to Aurora. All right. Uh, then there's the very poetic name of her first album all my demons greeting me as a friend. I said, that's a beautiful bit of highly, to state the obvious, but highly metaphorical and excellent writing. Um, what so many INFPs are known for. Um, and I joke, without even a pinch of soil in it. So reference back what I was saying in the part one about, um, you know, a, a, an incredible song could be written, you know, incredibly well written and really creative and um, just striking in all kinds of ways and original but if it's written by an ISFP chances are again there will be lots of exceptions I hope you know there will but chances are that if the wonderful expression the terrific writing um, is focused on kind of down to like beautiful 
descriptive or poetic detail that, that kind of has a concrete orientation in the subject matter, um, in what is being said, you know, word by word, line by line, then that, you know, then maybe if there's other supporting evidence, look more in the direction of uh, that you're dealing with a censor artist. Um, if, however, there's conceptualism, and I think that is the key, um, then perhaps suspect more strongly that you're dealing with um, an intuitive, uh, so-called intuitive artist. And if it's if it if it additionally has unabashed emotionalism to it, and, and a lot of it, like a mother load of it, as is the case <laughs> with Aurora. I mean, it's just it's all like it's all feeling. It's all feeling. Um, it's imagination and feeling. So. You know, if you see that, I, w I, I would say that is not definitely not enough to rule out it, um, the possibility that a thinker could have made it. Uh, some thinker could have, but um, it is much more likely that it was an NF who did it, um, a feeler. Who, and if it's got lo again lots of conceptualism and emotionalism, an NF made it. So, uh, most likely. Um, moving on to other evidence. Um, now here's a part that um, maybe is going to upset some INFPs in the audience. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I'll preface it by saying that uh, what I'm going to be doing, and I, I have lots more material for you guys. I've got, I don't know how many videos, but I've been thinking, I've got a lot of material that's kind of ready to go now and um, about INFP type. and. Uh, I just want to say right now that um, I'm very aware of and also very, <laughs> very, um, I feel very feisty about, uh, here I go, very FI, right? Like, you know, personal opinion and feelings and passion and uh, I feel very feisty about defending INFPs um, because I feel it's uh, very illegitimate and unfair and harmful. It offends my value system, my FI, you know, heavy FI reckoned value system. It offends me on many levels and very deeply all the shit uh, and the invalid, what I consider invalid criticisms that are leveled routine, casually and routinely at INFPs. Um, it angers me um, and I will take great satisfaction in uh, taking those many of those criticisms and demonstrating the invalidity of them. Um, but I, have, you know, I want to say that INFPs again. You know, I love a lot of INFPs, and also I, again, I feel for you quite literally. You know, quite literally, I am made of the same kind of building blocks, if you like, in that I share all of your cognitive functions, and they're ordered in a proximal way to yours. You know, significantly different with significantly different effects in the personality, but um, it doesn't take much for me to um, get into the shoes of an INFP, usually. If I put my mind to it a little bit and I use my big imagination and my deep empathy and my FI being my primary uh, judging function and all that, you know, I consider all those things. I may not agree with an INFP or I may not um, be feeling the same thing as them in a given situation. We mean, you know, we, I may not uh, think to myself, oh, that's exactly what I would do, and, you know, in response to something or to a inaction. However, it usually doesn't take me much to relate to an INFP. It doesn't take me much to feel that I have an under you know, a decent understanding of why they did what they did or why they thought what they did, you know, why they felt what they did. So I'm coming from that kind of um, empathy and. <clears throat> for people of that type. And my uh, way of advocating, again, that's, you know, I do that. My way of advocating to, uh, for groups that are other underserved or that are disparaged or that are treated unjustly in some way, and I feel INFPs often are, um, my, my kind of form of advocacy is, is not a defensive one. Um, so, you know, just so you guys, you know, you may, I want you to know the kind of thrust of where I'm going with uh, the stuff I'm going to be talking about with your type and how I'm going to be dealing with, you know, sort of looking at and responding to uh, frequent criticisms of INFPs. Uh, it's not going to be from a defensive posture. 
It's not going to be because that's not my style and I think it's a weak position. Anyway, I have all kinds of reasons. Who cares? Whatever. I'm not going to be doing it. So I'm not going to be doing things like, de you know, denying that there's anything to the critic, you know, to some of the criticisms. I'm not going to be doing a PR campaign of like, yeah, they're really emotional, but they're just as rational and blah, blah, blah as everybody. I'm like, I'm not going to be doing defensive stuff like that. What I will be doing is looking at, um, you know, where these common criticisms come from. I'll be examining them critically, uh, and I will be reinterpreting them, the bases of those criticisms. And some part of that will be, will be saying, yeah, you know, like what you're criticizing, I, I agree that that is a phenomenon, that that is a thing often associated with such and such a particular that pertains to the INFP type. But then I will be doing, um, you know, I'll be evaluating that in a very critical way. So I won't be running from, you know, those criticisms. I will be tackling them. All right, so with that in mind, let me proceed to what I wrote here. This is private correspondence. Here we go. I'm going to tell you what I said. Um, as pertains to Aurora's very poetic album title, which just, I mean, just terrific, right? Um, so metaphorical. Uh, greeting all my demons as a friend. I'm just terrific. Ugh. Anyway, so I say the embrace of one's demons there fairly screams to me INFP as well. It's a very romantic, very romantic are the associations that title brings up. And indeed it is the case that many INFPs, not all, have a lot of demons and are very aware of the fact. I would rewrite this right now as saying um, that I think what a lot of INFPs would say to this, again, correct me if I'm wrong, INFPs, but I think what a lot of INFPs would say is we, you know, we, maybe we have as many demons as anyone else, but we're just more aware of them. And I would say, I would tend to agree with that. Um, yeah, INFPs uh, sort of study subjects, the way they can have such superb empathy for others is because uh, they have a sort of massive, I, and I get this concept, I'm definitely borrowing from the personality hacker team and what they wrote about differences between INFP and um, INFJ. And uh, I thought it was really correct and terrifically put. Um, INFPs, the way they can produce the kind of deep uh, empathy for others that they can, um, how they can really understand what someone else is going through is because they have such an in, a thoroughgoingly and intensely subjective um, focus in their dominant function of introverted feeling. So you could say that they're most um, that they're they're constantly studying their own experience. They're studying they're 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 studying and gathering all kinds of incredibly detailed and emotionally intense as well, and very vivid, and, you know, um, uh, cast by their very vivid imaginations also, this sort of examination of the self. Um, the INFP goes way, 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 way in there, and kind of stores up a lot of that information. And what they're doing when they're producing empathy for another is they're kind of drawing on this huge amount of data I call it like emotional units of data, you know, emotionally, um, yeah, more than imbued. I mean, it's part of the thing itself for INFP. Um, INFPs feel about things and what they, and the, you know, they, they, you don't have to tell them. It's not a shock to them, the idea that one cannot feel without thinking or think without feeling. They're like, well, pfft. they're the last people you need to tell that to. They're like, well, isn't that obvious? You know, because it is for them. Um, 